Okay, welcome to part 7 of Your Being Shaped, a series of videos I'm doing on um, Vance Packard's The People Shapers. Um, and we were talking about um, the Gado's experiments, continuing on, and I was talking about how um, how this kind of technology, you know, to the current day, could be uh, manipulate, manipulating maybe the whole population. Um, without any of us really uh, knowing it um, and uh, I was going to continue with uh, more of Delgado's experiments uh, so reading on here um, says here perhaps Delgado's most fascinating experiment was when he um, maneuvered, maneuvered a real place sorry a real um, palace revolution by remote control a male monkey called Ali had established himself as the uh, uh, trulucent aut uh, autocrat <laughs> of a well-ordered colony, colony of uh, seven monkeys. He uh, commandeered two-thirds of, of the cage as his private territory. From another room, the Delgado group with cameras running radioed Electric, electrical stimulation to Ali's Kuldate's nucleus. The aim was to block out his aggressiveness. Rather quickly, Ali stopped his pacing and growling. He settled down, became benign and um, contemplative. And rather quickly, the other monkeys sensed that something fantastic had happened. Soon they were crowding about Ali without fear, and he didn't seem to mind. The liberation from tyranny, tyranny lasted for about an hour. Within 12 minutes after the stimulation of Ali's brain was... Uh, sorry, within 12 minutes after the stimulation of Ali's brain was discontinued, he managed to uh, reassert his authority. The other monkeys fearfully retru retreated to their corner. But this was not the end of tampering with Ali's authority. The human manipulators installed a lever near the food tray when pressed, the lever would send um, inhibiting stimulation into Ali's uh, caudate nucleus. As the days passed, a number of the monkeys pressed the lever accidentally or out of curiosity. Uh, simultaneously, Ali became less aggressive. Only a female, Elisa, figured out the connection between the lever and Ali's brief mild spells. What a find! Elisa became bolder, looking Ali straight in the eye. Delgado reports when Ali threatened her, it was repeat, repeatedly observed that Elisa responded by lever pressing. On the days when the lever was available to Elisa, there was a drop in the total number of Elisa's aggressive acts towards his subjects. Something closer to peaceful coexistence came to prevail. Um, yeah, so that's. Um, removing the natural order, isn't it, via mind control of those animals. Uh, later on here it reads, who would give the orders that would make the uh, societies run when he's talking, referring to um, human society. Uh, yeah, and an aspiring big brother would certainly cheat and have his own, his own uh, electric, electrode removed, and those of his police as well. Uh, so yeah, he's talking about, you know, what could happen with us. Uh, in this uh, little section it says uh, producing robot-like behaviour. So let's, let's read this. Um. As with humans, he and his associates have stimulated several areas involved in motor activity. They were able to evoke cries of sustained vowel, vowel sounds. Um, and here, yeah, here he's referring to um, a human patient here, and this is quite disturbing, I think. Uh, he calls one woman patient in his group when she was alone in her own room to turn her head and move her body as if she were looking for something. This was repeated. When she was asked what she was doing, the woman always had a plausible explanation. Apparently, she had no idea that she was responding to electrical stimulation on her brain. 
Her answers were, I'm just looking for my slippers, or I heard a noise, or I'm restless, or I was looking under the bed. So it seems just as um, successful in humans, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's read on. Uh, Delgado achieved his most dramatic results by stimulating the red nucleus in the brain of a monkey called, named Lucy. After five seconds of stimulation, Lucy interrupted whatever she was doing, changed her facial expressions, turned her head, head to the right, stood up on her two feet, circled to the right, walked on her two feet in perfect balance to tiptoe. Sorry, in perfect balance to a pole, climbed the pole, returned to the floor, growled, threatened or actually bit a uh, subordinate monkey, stopped being aggressive, approached the rest of the group in a friendly manner and resumed a spontaneous behaviour. This sequence of acts took about 14 seconds. Under stimulation she always performed this same purposeless series of motor movements in the same order, with some in improvisation in how she did them. The sequence of actions persisted after 20,000 stimulations. Some years ago, the science uh, writers Ruth and Edward Breacher reported an attempt to automate a donkey by the use of electrical brain stimulation. The project was undertaken by a corporation seeking a research and, seeking a research and development contract with the US Department of Defense while the military was thought to be interested can only be speculated. Hmm. I've thought of something just now, but I've forgotten it. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Um, it's funny, it's frightening how um, robot-like we can become um, by all of this, but Previously, I was, I was look, we were talking about the left and the right hemispheres of the brain and how the right is responsible, they say, for intuition and art and creativity. Um, perhaps if somebody is stuck in their five senses in a, say, left brain mentality all the time, they can be manipulated like remote control, just like robots. Um, but maybe, you know, maybe that's when consciousness is... is um, left at the door, but if consciousness is let in, um, when I say consciousness I mean um, the idea that our brains aren't us, just as our bodies aren't completely us, the brain can be a, um, a receiver transmitter for consciousness and we are that consciousness, so if that's the case, if we were f um, fully operating with the right hemisphere, let's say, if it is to do with that as well as, well as to the left, um, these devices could have little or no inf influence on us. We could override them with our own consciousness and we could decide our own thoughts. Um, because it, it's creativity, isn't it? That's what they say. When you create something, it comes from with you, it comes from within. Um, it's not from an external source. So maybe that's the answer. If you're a creator, then these, these um, electrical stimulations, these implants, and that they'll have no effect on you. Um, that's that's um, quite important to uh, consider. <clears throat> so more on. Aha. Uh -huh. um, this is a. Uh, this is uh, interesting here. Um, here more briefly. Uh, just skipping a bit and uh, reading something I've highlighted. Here more briefly are some other ways scientists are learning to modify mood and behaviour. Um, wiping out the maternal instinct. Uh, well, we seem to kind of bump into that topic, didn't we? Um, one instinct wi widely shared by man and mammals is the maternal one. The mother of a baby, rhesus monkey, spends months hugging it and tidying her baby and calling it and cooing it. Sorry, she is in despair when the baby disappears from her view. Delgado, him again, uh, reports that when a ten-second electrical stimulation was applied to the um, mesencephalon, I can't pronounce that, but it's a part of the brain, take my word for it, uh, of a mother monkey named Rosie, 
She completely lost interest in her baby for about ten minutes. She ignored his tender calls and rejected his attempts to approach her. The baby seemed disoriented and sought warmth with other nursing, another nursing mother in the colony. Um, if family bonds can indeed be disrupted electrically, um, conceivably other bonds can be too. If so, and with further advances in brain technology, totalitarian leaders, again just conceiv conceivably, might be greatly interested in the idea of instituting some kind of broad application. A common strategy for totalitarian regimes for maintaining control is to take over child socialisation from the family as early as possible and also to try to disrupt pre-existing small group affiliations the isolated individuals are more malleable and well, this is exactly what I was talking about in my previous videos especially towards the end part um, uh, when I was referring to um, all the sucks is a brave new world because um, yeah, wiping out the maternal instincts was, was the, one of the key uh, things that um, happened in a brave new world um, so that families no longer existed um, uh, because um, people weren't produced naturally were they so yeah, there's no need for that um, again, this is right on par with it. Um, let's read on. Uh, bending the mind. Um, for thousands of years, humans have known that certain plants, um, peyote, I think it is pronounced that way, is, is one of them. It contains substances that can uh, create hallucinations, which are often exciting. They commonly have been used in religion, religious rites and orgies. They disrupt the normal uh, electrochemistry of the brain. Uh, yeah, more on mind alter alternating drugs, um, LSD, uh, and things like that. Aldous Huxley was talking, up, spoke about that, um, and he had his soulmate in a brave new world. Um, and I was again, I I was mentioning about um, the current technology of um, brain control, um, and what I mean, you know, by um, implants, uh, computer technology, how advanced it could be and how they could uh, induce hallucinations anyway because although if, if there's certain parts of the brain that are responsible for um, dreamlike states, dreaming, hallucinations if you target those electrically you can uh, induce all sorts of things and um, let's continue on in part 8